series of choices and you can make the best choice through God's Word. Stay tuned on Roadmap, a journey with the Word. Welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone around the world. Ooh. We are back. Yes. Hallelujah. This is Roadmap episode three, part B, as we continue on mind management. But before I begin, of course, I would like to specially give a warm and awesome thank you to our man of God. Thank you, Pastor Sir, for teaching us the word. These words we minister today is through the teachings you've given us, through the words that you have written for us. And I'm so grateful to you for all the teachings you've given us all through the years and also to our wonderful Zono Pastor. We love you, sir. And thank you so much. So right now we are going to start on part B of mind management. So last week, you know, we delve into what the mind is. We understood that it is a spiritual entity. It's not a physical, tangible thing. Mm -hmm. It is spiritual. Yeah. And we also understood that in the mind is where we get thoughts, mm -hmm. we get certain emotions and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And the mind is the gateway to your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. The real you, remember, this is in the real you. The human, the spirit man, the inward man is the real you. Yes. And the, we got to touch on the importance of your thoughts because your thoughts are aspects in your life that can really determine how you react to certain things, how you see certain things, how you view things. So now we are going to discuss on how through processing, through the thoughts that you have, how can that overall affect the way your life is as an individual, especially as a Christian, mm -hmm. because there's a lifestyle we've all been called into individually. Yeah. You know, we are not like the rest of the world. Remember mm -hmm. on different leagues huh? mm -hmm. and it's the way we play in our league. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to talk about the first thing I'd like to ask is what is disposition? Because, you know, as there's a type of mental disposition every child of God is supposed to have. But yeah. in general, I just want to give an overview to our viewers. What is disposition? So thank you very much for the opportunity. And before I start, I want to thank my man of God. And of course, I was on a pastor for the opportunity to share with children all around the world. So disposition, first, first of all, is actually the positive or the negative way someone views the world yeah. and that view can only be explained by what kind of thoughts they have processed they allow process be mm -hmm. processed in their mind and those process the processing of the thoughts are based on the information they allow in their mind yeah so we just basically just sharing that okay the information i am allowing in my mind are being processed into the thoughts that will translate to the views I have based on the kind of information I receive. Mm -hmm. And that can reflect on your attitude mm -hmm. because um, we say that who you are is what you think. Mm -hmm. So when we are thinking a certain way, we will act upon it. And therefore it means that this is our attitude, this is how we're gonna talk, this is how we're gonna act, this is mm -hmm. how we're going to react. Yeah. And just to share what attitude actually means, just as we shared about disposition, attitude is the disposition to act in ways determined by the mental processing mm -hmm. of our feelings, emotions, beliefs, or reasoning. Yeah. And all this are based on the information that you are receiving. So the thoughts we are allowing into our mind it's very important to know, are they good, are they bad? Because we have learned when reading the power of the mind yeah. at our own personal time that the Lord has told us what kind of thoughts we should allow in our mind yeah. because we should bar out anything that's negative. So we should check, hey, is this pure? Is this lovely? Mm -hmm. Is this of good report? Mm -hmm. Is this according to God's will? Is this mm -hmm. according to God's word? Therefore, you allow those kind of um, words or um truth be processed into your mind that can reflect on your attitude because going back to guarding the kind of information you're allowing in your mm -hmm. mind that yeah. will be processed if you read proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 above all else guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life yeah. wellspring of life so your heart we are told that the mind is the way to Yes. our heart mm -hmm. and our heart here is our spirit yeah. so we need to guard it very thoroughly because yeah. it can affect how we're going to react to certain things as someone who is for example not born again when somebody will come up to them and say you have cancer what they will when they process that thought they'll be 
they'll be feeling sick already when yeah. people <laughs> make mistakes and say, oh, it's sorry. Like, oh, no, it makes sense now from last week. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they start to go, oh, yes, and they start to link up all the symptoms. But yeah. people make mistakes and say, oh, sorry, this was not your report. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to stand strong mm. on, okay, I'm a, Getting this kind of information, how am I going to process it, mm-hmm. and I'm going, how am I going to let it affect my attitude? Because of course, we don't always get good information. Mm-hmm. We also get bad information, and those bad information can be processed in our mind. But now, this is the key question: How do you react to it? Yeah. How is your attitude coming Today. out from it? And it's very important to keep that in mind. About wow. wow! 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 Would anyone like to add on? Yeah, that? just to add on what she's talking about, the reaction. The mm-hmm. reaction actually comes from how spiritually mature you are, mm-hmm. because. Mm-hmm. Pastor touched on something in the book. He talks about learn to respond spiritually, not mm-hmm. carnally, not mm-hmm. emotionally. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of things some people have problems with, especially people who've actually come into Christ or those who've been Christians for a long time. They still react in the normal way of the flesh, how a normal person who's still in the world would react is the way they are reacting. Mm-hmm. But that's not God wants of you. He wants you to have a different reaction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we see this in the book of Ephesians 4.23. Mm-hmm. If we can just go there. Ephesians 4, 23. Oh, okay. My Bible is trying me. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 23. Yeah, okay. And the scripture says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Mm-hmm. And when we also touch in Romans 12, Two, mm-hmm. which is like the foundation of the mind you know mm-hmm. it tells us the same thing about being not conformed to this world because it's highlighting that there's a certain way that the world behaves yeah. but mm-hmm. you are not to behave that way mm-hmm. that's what we're told be renewed in your mind in mm-hmm. your spirit mm-hmm. so now that brought to my mind you know the spirit of god brought to my mind when jesus talked about you know the types of reaction you give people mm-hmm. he said in the book of matthew 5 44 mm-hmm. i'm just gonna read it for us Matthew 5, 44. 44. And the Lord said, But I say to you, Mm -hmm. love your enemies, bless those who curse you, Mm -hmm. do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you Mm -hmm. and persecute you. Mm -hmm. So what the Lord Jesus here, he wasn't talking about just a set of instructions. He was given the kingdom way of responding. Mm -hmm. This is the way you respond now that you are a child of God. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between you and someone from the world? If someone hates you and you hate them back. Mm -hmm. But if you're a child of God, your new reality action should be i pray for that person yeah. i love that person exactly. i bless that person even if they curse me because this is a kingdom way of reasoning which is god's way of you know spiritual way of thinking mm-hmm. now he wants you to have that because it's not that every bad thing that happens as sister and i said how you react to it is important yeah. because any type of information can actually come to you but what you react to in the manner you react mm. is how the situation is going to affect you because mm-hmm. if i react you know someone says oh you know they give not to me an example <laughs> somebody else somebody told them oh you got cancer okay now if you say ah, you know as Melissa said this is why i've been feeling this way but if you don't say eh, eh, that's not a good report god mm-hmm. didn't say this about you me he no said that my body yeah me. that's not what my god says so i'm not gonna you know stick to such a bad report yeah. instead because you're spiritually alert to god's mentality of you you don't give vent to satanic ways or satan's way of reasoning mm-hmm. instead you give vent to your kingdom nature mm-hmm. which is to respond with the word of god to any situation so can I quickly add that yeah brought to mind romans 8 verse 7 mm-hmm. which says which which I love about, about our Lord, He tells you, He lived the Word of God literally tells you. Romans eight verse seven says, or oh, verse six says, for to be carnally minded is death, mm. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. He literally told you there and there that if you are spiritually minded, you have life and peace, mm. and if you are carnally minded, is death. Mm. So. When you're spiritually minded, you're given life and mm. you're given peace. Mm. When th- things of the world come at you, you are not moved. Mm. That's why people wonder, why are you so calm? Because I know who I am. Mm. I know I'm spiritually minded. I work, um, Pastor always says, we abide by a different set of rules. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and you get to this level of thinking by being spiritually minded. And 
this is through f- you feeding on the word and everything mm. we're talking about and just building upon the word of God daily mm. and so on to add. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, all these things are very important. This is just brings to mind something that Pastor said. He said, let divinity swallow up humanity. Mm. There's a point that you need to come like to as, as a child. Yes, you can write it down. There's a point <laughs> that you need to come to as a child of God where mm. the word of God has so... Um, what's the word? Dominated. Enveloped, yeah. de- mm. dominated your mind. That's all you think about. Yeah. I know that's why when I was reading, of course, the power of your mind. And Pastor said again, I want to say thank you for this yes. book. Thank yeah. you, Pastor. Or oh, bless sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was in the book of Isaiah, chapter thirty-three verse 24 when it says those who dwell in zion shall not say i am sick Amen. there's yes. a kingdom that means one if i dwell in zion there's a type of mentality i run by yeah. there's a type of mentality i live by mm. and don't you know i just like to put this as a side note don't be ashamed to think differently from the rest of the yeah, world yeah. it's not a problem mm. you know while Actually everyone grace. Yes, yeah it's grace when everyone is saying oh we've all failed like mm. oh, that test was hard yeah. if we all fail mm. well we're all in this mm. together so you will say me i'm not part of you and yeah. that verse that says wide is the road to destruction yes yeah. and yeah. narrow is the road to salvation yeah. <laughs> yes. to life to, yeah, life. to, life. to life yeah so all these type of things are very important and it all rounds up to the renewing of your mind. Yes. How exactly, as a child of God, are you? From the moment you confess Jesus as the Lord of your life, the Bible says you have not been baptized into one spirit. Mm. Now God's spirit dwells inside of you. But unless that excellent spirit now gets the excellent mindset, it will not be operating like that outside. Yeah, huh? that's true. You'll be you'll be still doing things jaga jaga. Someone tells you <laughs> don't mind the word, you know, someone tells you something, you go and do the opposite thing, then they come back to you. You're like, where's the thing? Oh, is that what you asked? Mm. And the person said it like three times. Mm. On excellence, mm. you must change this mindset. And what does Pastor say by that? He says, one, you need to remove the 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 hard drives of on excellence wow. of negativity you need to remove them that's actually what we touched on last week yeah. we touched on it a bit you would you yeah i want to add something mm-hmm. on that you know when we're talking about the minds the thoughts that are in there i want to read a scripture from second corinthians chapter 10 verse 45 and the word of God says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, Amen. but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, mm-hmm. casting down arguments or imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge mm-hmm. of God. Mm-hmm. Now, it continues on, you know, the word is powerful. But strongholds in this scripture does not refer to, you know, a physical territory or physical place, fortified place. You know, it refers to ideas theories, beliefs Mm -hmm. that are contradictory to the word of God that stop God's people from advancing. Mm -hmm. And some of you might have had, you know, strongholds in your mind. Let's say, for example, in your family, everyone had come from a poor background. So now you, in your life, someone let's say you you wanted to apply for a job but you didn't get it then you'd be like oh it's been this way with my granddad and you know my dad and this is just yeah it's just this is just the way it is in my family but no these are strongholds that are withholding you from accessing the truth of god's word Mm -hmm. and pastor said he gave a more elaborate explanation of what strongholds are he says these are mental walls of containment that prevent people from advancing in the things of god Mm -hmm. so these are systems these are ethics these are philosophies Mm -hmm. that keep you away from the thinking of God. Yeah. But thankfully, thanks be unto God, there's a way to bring them down. Yeah. And that's through the armor of God's word. Mm-hmm. You know, when we read about the armor of God, we see this the belt of truth, there's a sword of the spirit, spirit. there's a breastplate of righteousness. And you can but, find these yeah. in Galatians 5, 22 to 20. Yes, it's actually in Ephesians 6, 13 to 17. There are two sides. Yeah, but it's yeah, yeah Ephesians exactly. 6, 13, 17. So when we see that in the scripture, we see there's one thing that's 
for offense, a one weapon that's for offense, and that's the sword of the spirit. Mm-hmm. That's what's able to cut down those strongholds, mm-hmm. bring them down, and it overthrows the reasoning of the disputer, which is Satan. Mm-hmm. So now you're able to allow God's word to actually take a board in you without fighting it, mm-hmm. saying, oh, the word of God is saying you're more than a victor, but my family has been failing. Instead of mm-hmm. doing that tug of war you're arguing all the time, you're actually now able to take the word of God and it's Establish it as the building in your mind. That becomes your stronghold now because you're not moved anymore yeah. because the word of God has taken its position in you. Yes. 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 I just want to, um, you know, just lay it out there little by little. Mm. We already know the mind is faculty of someone's thoughts and reasoning. Mm. And we can't see our thoughts or our reasonings, right? So now, uh, as also what uh, Sister Anais and Anita said about what happens, whatever comes into our thoughts, it will reflect onto our attitude. And our attitude is the way we talk or react to certain things. Mm-hmm. So now it will either be negative or positive, but of mm-hmm. course we want it to be positive. Mm-hmm. But now for it to be positive, you need to be able to put yourself, uh, let's say, uh, let me say, Put yourself into the word, actually, because we've said it many times here that the word of God is the way to many great things. Mm. It's the way in which it will help you see things in another way, and that is in the spiritual way. Yeah. So if you react in a way that does not go according to the word, that's you letting your own spirits to take place. But if you react in a way that goes according to the word, that's you allowing your inner true man who is one with God, as it said, when you become born again, as you accept Christ into your life, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, mm. joint one to the Lord, you are one spirit. Mm. So when you are one spirit with God, all things that you do should reflect God mm. and everything that he is. Because of course, we have now, we have his nature. Mm. You know, he said when he created us, he made us an image of him. So we are to represent him. So we, we need to just keep that in mind that whatever comes, you know, whatever com- uh, we can't really control what comes to us, the information that comes to us, mm. but we have the ability to manage yeah. and to, we have the ability to know what to do with it. Mm. And that is, of course, well, what could help you into managing that is through the word of God. It has, it has been given it to us there very bluntly, very straightforward on how to uh, manage this type of thing. So you need to be able to look into, look to your, uh, at yourself and be like, okay, when I hear certain things, how do I react? Mm. Is it according to my own thoughts and everything like that? Or is it according to the word of God and to the spirit in which I have with Christ? Yes. The one spirit I've, I've, I've created with Christ. Mm. So you need to dwell on this and you see how things will change for you. Mm. Because I, we are all the testimony mm. of when now the word has settled inside of us. Mm. That before, if someone um, curses me or still for me, the way I will insult that person, <laughs> oh, I think that day I, someone needed to pray for me. But then now when certain things like that happen, I will just say, God bless you. you know, not in the way that God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. And I hope you see things in a different way. Yeah. That this attitude of yours will change. Mm-hmm. And also, of course, with the end that they will build a relationship with God because that's what we're here to do. Yeah. You know, we're here to help others build a relationship with mm-hmm. God and take Him as, and take God as their Lord and Savior. Mm-hmm. So that's something you need to dwell on. Look back onto yourself. Look back onto the things that you allow to take place into your mind and how you reflect it. You know, you can manage it. You, we can't control what comes to us, as I said, but you can manage on what you can do with that information. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Expanding a little bit on managing, you know, being able to manage the type, type of thoughts you process in your mind, as well as being how you were before and how you've changed, as well as also what Sister Anita shared about your stronghold changing to the fact that you're no longer thinking of, oh, because... My parents failed before, that's why it happened to me. It's based on the content of your mind. How yeah. are you changing the way it's been processed? Because it is possible. God cannot tell us to do something that we are not able to do. Yeah. Everything he instructed us to do in the word of God. We have the provision, we have the capacity, the ability, the power, the authority to do it. Every equipment that we need to do God's will, accomplish it, change our mind, renew our mind, it is given there and then. Nothing to to break down, okay, where is the sign? Everything is there. So you need to know that if you dwell yourself richly in the word of God, as it says in Colossians 3.16, 
the way you'll be able to change the processing, not just change the thoughts that are coming, but the, the way you're processing the, the, the information you're getting and your reasoning mm -hmm. can change as well which will show in your growth in the spirit. So it is possible for you to renew your mind. It is yeah. possible for you to change the attitude you had before because you can rearrange, you can reorganize, you can manage the way you're processing mm -hmm. your, your thoughts and see based on God's perspective. Yeah. Uh, perspective. And with the life of Christ in you, you have, you have now gained an excellent spirit mm -hmm. and you can walk in excellency. And that is only through you renewing your mind. That is only through you allowing the word be a foundation. We have said it so many times, but it's, it's allowing the word be a foundation in your life. Mm -hmm. And all things will, will become easy for you in, in everything that you do and everything that you, you touch and everything that you see. Just the way you will be, it will be totally different from others that even other people will start to recognize, oh, how come you're yes, all of a sudden calm? Or normally at this time you would have probably said something by now, but you're not saying anything or something like that. Yes. You see, so it's all based on you renewing your mind. That's very much important. You renewing your mind and renewing your mind with the word of God. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I know as they've all said in regards to renewing your mind, I'm telling you the Christian life is sweet. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Honestly, you can live this life with complete and utter joy in spite of the trials and tribulations you can still always be bubbly and yeah. joyful mm -hmm. you yeah. not that uh, someone sees you your facial expression is like hey, ten, ten five past <laughs> Christian. <laughs> Christian, you, you're, you're, you know all those things can stop but all that it what it starts from is also seen from within mm -hmm. seeing it first from inside mm -hmm. because as you renew your mind now you need to start visualizing you yeah, need to start yeah, you yeah. know picturing that Better image like, picture. like when i enter to into this class i'm not i'm not going to be afraid now i was talking to someone before a soul of mine and they were telling me that um they kind of get uncomfortable and afraid when they're in front of their class and i was like why <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh, well, because some of those students are like annoying and they like like whispering about me. I said, can you not consider them a factor? Mm. You belong to Jesus Christ. When you enter a room, I told her, start seeing, see from a different perspective. Say that I'm entering here, boldness has just stepped in. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to do this presentation. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to be like, woo, excellent mm. breeze. Mm. It's from inside. You need to start seeing from inside. Your inside, yeah. because that's the real you. Yeah. Remember, you're not using physical. Say, ah, this time I'm now seeing things. So this is how my life is going to be. My results are coming out like this. Well, this it next year. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Never. All those type of things. Yes, never for us. But mm. anyway, you know, you need to be able to see things from within, just like players or footballers, before mm -hmm. they go out to play a match, what do they do? They stay out looking at the whole field. They are examining all their moves. They're like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to score this goal. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to block this goal. That's how you are. Mm -hmm. When you're going out in your day, in your lifetime, mm -hmm. you know, you've pictured everything. Yeah. Everything is already set. I'm going out. When I enter to this, into this bus, perfection, mm -hmm. everything, I'm going to do this work, I'm coming out with excellence. Your mind is in that way. And the point is, you know, tied to that is because your future, and this one thing that was really remarkable to me was that Pastor said, your future is history with God. Mm -hmm. Your future is history with God. Why you are busy there? Because remember, the Lord said, the plans I have for you, they are of, good. they are good, and not of not evil. Of evil. Yeah. So God's work, God's design is already Anais, Esther's all the way. Amen. Yes. You know, all those type of things. That's the way God already is picturing things. Not picturing, rather. He's already seen. That's, he's framed it yeah. that way. He already sealed it. Sealed it. But unless you take it into account as you renew your mind, as you put the effort into saying, I'm, cause you know, your mind is not one day old. Mm -hmm. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a every day. Thing. That's why Paul said, uh, we renew our inward man day by day. It's mm -hmm. an everyday thing. You take it, then you begin to picture and see from the father's eyes. Mm -hmm. You go to, you know, I look at something. I'm looking at it differently. Mm -hmm. I'm not walking into a place as every other person who is sweating, like if you watch dramas, see people in interviews, 
they come out from the room, someone is crying, so wicked inside, and you start shivering you start there. Shivering. Uh, inside. It's not your testimony. It's not your testimony, you know. Yeah. God has already pictured this is a good and perfect child. Mm-hmm. Everything right. So how do you see? What's your picture inside? Are you the type of man and woman that will be there ruminating all the evil things? You look at someone plotting, yeah. plotting, devising like Satan, <laughs> devising wicked and unreasonable thoughts inside of mm. you. Mm-mm. Or are you the one that sits down and you can see the whole world and see excellence? Mm. You can see your life prosper mm. just like the master. Mm. And you know, that's one of the things you said, you know, at, about the things you see. There's something Pastor said within the book that I find really, you know, it's so true, but a lot of people neglect it. They always like blaming other people for their problems. He said, free yourself of self-inflicted internal conflicts, mm-hmm. meaning that you are the one sometimes who actually causes yourself to feel such ways. Mm-hmm. Like information might have come from outside, but you sit down and you decide to now keep thinking about it. Or you start fudging, how do I say, you start creating <laughs> instances within your head <laughs> of what somebody has done to you. The person hasn't even done jack. You're already imagining them <laughs> doing something bad how you're getting angry, how you're punching them. And the person is right in front of you. They don't know anything is going on in your mind. We read in the book of Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. This is very, you know, powerful scripture. 8 verse 10. And the word of God says, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, in that part where it says do not sorrow or do not be sorry what it actually means the proper rendering of the scripture is do not fabricate Mm. do not fabricate pain do not fabricate anger do not start creating it from inside of you and then now you you're starting to manifest things that no one understands because (laughs) those type of manifestations they're not from god as i said earlier give vent to your kingdom nature not to the ways of the world which is what satan wants you to portray because Satan, remember Satan cannot create anything. Mm. He can't, he's not a creator. We were made in the image of God. So we just like God can create. Yeah. So he needs your mind in order to carry out his operations in this earth. Mm. So if you give vent to your head, if you give vent to Satan's ways, I was about to say something wrong. If you give vent to Satan's ways, then you find out that his plans for your own life will now start being manifested. Mm. But if you give them to the ways of the Lord, then God's plans for your life will start flowing out. So that's what I wanted to add on. Wow. Just, to just to let you know about creation, our imaginative power mm. is our creative ability. Yeah. So whether it's good or bad, you have creative ability as you're born again. So that's why it's important to train yourself to manage your mind. Mm. Because you need to make sure that the information you're getting is it the word of god when it is the word of god you're able to create the images create the life you want to see on this earth the life that of course is in line with what god has planned for you to live it successfully because god has already as said by our leader god has already set our life Mm -hmm. he said you are living in health prosperity and riches you're you're excelling in everything you do so once you receive that word imagine when you're going to go do a test for an interview imagine it when you're going to go for you know a job interview. Imagine it when you're going to just talk to people and represent yourself, just doing anything that's excellent. So it's very important that our moment of creation is not evil, as given by example by our, mm-hmm. sis- our sister, where the person is just imagining things mm-hmm. way beyond, you know, it, the other person believes that you are imagining about. But you're always creating the life you want to see, the life yeah. that God has already said you need to see. And that also can come from our moment of meditation. Yep. Yeah. That also can come from our moment of medication, meditation. And meditation is when someone's focus goes completely to reflect on something, to pound on something, to project something into the world. Mm. So when we're meditating on the Word of God, you are allowing the information, the truth, get into your mind, being processed. Your attitude will be to ponder. Your mm. attitude will be to matter. Your attitude will be to respond to it that it is my life. Yeah. And you will see it manifest. There's no way you cannot see the word of God manifest in your life. But how did you receive it? How did you respond to it? That's the importance of how you're managing your mind. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, you know, God wants us to really take this 
seriously. Mm-hmm. Because this is the way we're going to live this successful Christian life. Mm-hmm. The life of victory. Because, you know, our man of God has re- regularly repeated this since the year 2020 when we're preparing and he told us that this year of preparation and now in the year of mm-hmm. gathering clouds yeah. and so on and so forth. He said that it's important as children of God that you 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 are prepared, mm. you know, to meet the master. Mm. And he said that the Lord is coming for a victorious church. Mm. He's coming for a people that Without they know who blame. they are without spot or blemish. Yeah. Spot is is inconsistent with God's word. Yeah. Spot is failure. Mm. Spot is those are spots. Mm. You're not supposed to be like that. Yeah. Like that. And I want to tell some people who might be watching this. Um, there are some of you that might hear these words and. Maybe you're fighting it. Huh? Don't look for a substitute to what is the real reality. reality. Stop looking yeah. for shadows when you have light. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't do that. You have the real content, the thing that is going to really change your mind. Put it to action. Mm-hmm. Put, it, put yourself in the place that I said it last week. I dare you. Go and give yourself to the word. Just this whole of June. This entire June. Place yourself in the position where the word has complete dominance over yourself. Mm. You will see the change. Mm. Because why walk in fear? Why always walk in complaint? Mm. Why always walk in sorrow when you can actually walk in the higher life? Mm -hmm. Like Abraham. Like Mm. Abraham. And that's what Abraham did, you know, as we're talking about seeing it from within. This is what the Lord Jesus taught him. Yes, yes. It was in Jesus, Jesus, the word, the, the word the taught word. him yeah. at that time. You know, he brought him out after he separated him from not to know some friends and to move from you for God to show you some That's things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some friends. Yeah, but anyway, God brought him out and said, "Brother, look to the north, look to the east, look to the west, look to the south. I will give you all this mm. for the inheritance. All of this." Abraham could have been like. Okay, just look around and say, you see, 100 meters, 100 meters, <laughs> and he saw, the, he world. saw the whole world. Wow. Now, God is saying, I have made you a victor, I have made you a king priest, you are more than a conqueror. Mm-hmm. These are the type of things that should be your, your daily your meditation, your daily meditations. And I want to emphasize on what she said because some people might not know how to meditate. The scriptures gives us three steps. You ponder. Ponder means you look at it. You just, you're ruminating. Hmm? You're on it. You're like, wow, this is so, so enlightening. You keep, you just keep looking at that same, maybe it's just one scripture. Then you begin to mutter, like, I can do all things through Christ's strength. It made the worst are coming. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all mm-hmm. things to Christ. You begin to now see yourself. You're seeing it. Now your mind yeah. is conforming to it. Mm-hmm. Then at a point, it will come out as, I don't want to shout, but you know, you roar it out. Mm-hmm. I can yeah. do all things to Christ. Now, yeah. complete dominance. Affirmation. Yeah. Affirmation. Complete dominance of God's word has come into your mind. Now, mm-hmm. Satan has no right to tell you you yeah. can't do anything. Yeah. No and the pointer is, it's not like you're having a time, okay, five minutes on pondering, mm. five minutes. Is, when you put your mind, mm. the minute you focus on it, it just starts, it just starts by really? itself. Yeah. The next thing, your answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't it, no. Yeah. It's, you, Men- you don't set time, okay, now I'm, I'm now going to, then I'm going to matter the word, then no. no. It's a process. You mm. see, when the Holy Spirit is with you and he's now guiding you, you can even be there for 30 minutes. You can be there for minutes. Minutes. 30 yeah. minutes. And I remember all the times our Zono pastor gave us opportunities, yes. especially in the first Thank you, sir. part of the year. Thank you so much, sir. You just tell us after service and praying, say, now H and every one of you, I'm giving you these four scriptures. Sit there for one hour, 30 minutes and meditate. Mm. That's it. You leave. Mm. Church members go next thing. 30 minutes in, wow. you start hearing some people. You're like, hey, something <laughs> is happening. Wow. You know, a uh, uh, different mindset because mm. God has so much expectation yeah. for us. There's so much He has planned for us if only we just decide to lambano. Mm. We just decide lambano. to pack it. Yeah. Then we would really live the extraordinary life. Mm. Yeah. So young people, you know, you don't have to be like, oh, you know, what am I supposed to do with my life? I'm just supposed to run with my feelings. Mm. Uh, 
I feel like <laughs> they all don't like me. We're not about feelings. I feel, yeah. It must be in the Lord to see us, to see people not living the life that He has mm. created for you to live. Mm. Like if you imagine you've made a way for someone to like walk and it's okay, for they there's food, they there's that, and then they walk somewhere else and like I'm starving. But like no, I made a way for mm-hmm. you. There's food with this. Like and this is what happened in the book of Genesis. In the beginning, we already see this stuff happening, you know, with Adam, Eve, <laughs> and the separated in the garden. So you see, um, this God had already told them what He expected of them, but God was showing them a plan for their life when mm-hmm. He told them, "Don't go eat that tree, bro." Like, okay, didn't say it like that, but you know, <laughs> He meant it like, "I have a plan, so yeah. you have to trust me on this one." But then the serpent. As we talked about strongholds and things that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God, he came and said, did God really say? That's how some people might come and tell you. You you don't have to be perfect. Where is it written that you're supposed to be perfect? They'll start questioning the word of God Mm -hmm. to now make you, or your mind is like, oh, that means that I don't always have to be excellent. That means sometimes I can fail. Uh -uh. If you want to be like that, if that's your choice, okay. But if someone is pushing you in that direction, don't do that. Stick to the word of God. And of course, you surely come back with the testimony Mm -hmm. but the point is that there will be circumstances around you that can start feeding into your thoughts Mm -hmm. like as i said in the beginning if eve had just stayed on the word because she she kind of knew to an extent what god had said because of Mm -hmm. adam Mm -hmm. so she had just said no god said we shouldn't touch it so i'm not going to do it but instead she started listening to another voice another voice yeah another voice that was not the voice of god then the bible says then she saw then it looked good to her. Mm-hmm. Then she did it. Mm-hmm. So that can start happening to you. You must start looking at things that are not the word of God. Then you will see it. Then you will start. You start reasoning it. You're like, ah, it, it seems fine. Sense. It makes sense. It's not, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Then finally you do it. But then it's actually not God. What, what God wants for your life. And then you walk outside of that perfect will of God. Then that's when you start finding troubles, mm-hmm. all those kind of issues in your life. But if you had stayed within the word of God, contained yourself within God's word in the first place, then those things wouldn't have happened. So mm-hmm. you have to make sure that don't make your mind available to things An that are con- inconsistent with the word of God. Always God, you Yeah, that's why you know the word of God so that when something comes to you, you know this is not of God in the first yeah. place. Yeah. So it's important as a child of God that as we've learned, one, you need to be able to process the information that comes to you. Yeah. So you need to train yourself through mind management. How am I going to take this? When a certain information comes, maybe your parents suddenly call you and they tell you, oh, there's no money. Mm. You say, parents, listen. No, 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 no. Don't <laughs> like that. But, you know, you can say, mom and dad, everything is going to be well. Yeah. We have abundant supply, especially yeah. if they are children of God too. Encourage your parents. Mm-hmm. Don't be like... Mm. The elders have spoken. No, no, you can speak to. We also, as children, as our parents, we encourage our parents. Well, well, maybe something is happening. We're like, no, maybe you know, someone hit their leg, and like, oh, my leg! I say, your leg is healed, Amen. and they're like, yes, that's the one. You know, yeah. you know, we all encourage each other in the word. That should be your way of doing things. Yeah. So you need to train yourself so that the way any information comes to you, you'll be able to process it correctly. Mm-hmm. And number two, you need to start applying meditation. Mm-hmm. If you know you never done it before start doing it don't be meditating on useless things that don't add any value to your life you go and you start meditating on on actors lives wow this woman she's been doing bibliography you start their whole life you you know them more than they know themselves <laughs> that. so it's important that it happens because eh? yeah, there are some people that are like obsessed but you know be obsessed with the word yeah be obsessed with the word and that's where um as I said before, let me just finish that. It's important that you learn what meditation is. This is your motive of creation. Mm-hmm. Your mind is so vast. It's so beautiful. God has given you. How do you think some of the things that happened right now happened? Mm-hmm. Men thought. They pondered. They, they thought on it. And then planes. Whoever thought man would be flying in the air. Mm-hmm. They did it. We thought of a skyscraper. Skyscraper. It, it was an idea from the mind. And they started pondered on it, thought about it, made a plan. You know, 
It didn't happen overnight. He obviously thought about, okay, if I'm going to build something this high, it needs structure, it needs support. Mm. This was someone thinking about it, meditating on the thought like that. Visualizing yeah. it, and mm. then it became real. But yeah. unlike them that had to do many tries, like the guy from KFC or the one who made Pringles a hundred tries just to do something, we, after we catch it one time, we, came, mm-hmm. we, we, we highlight it, we just... It's time. It's time. So one time. One time. Mm-hmm. That's the type of children of God we are. Mm-hmm. So it's important. Take into account. Learn to process information. That you might be able to live a successful life. Your attitude towards things will be God kind, yeah. not mankind. Mm-hmm. God kind reactions. It's not hard, honestly. And if you have friends, like maybe Statanaka is your friend, and you she, live the good life with you. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Want to be my friend. You yes. Good life, yeah. <laughs> but as I was saying, you know, if you have a friend like Sister Tanaka, and she's always responding to you with the word, mm. maybe she's, maybe you did something or you're saying something, and she comes and corrects you, saying, "No, this is what God said. Don't fight her. Don't start saying. So you're not caring for my feelings. You're not. Don't start doing all those things. Join her." Mm. Join her. Join this challenge. Join this. Ch- join her. <laughs> Say yes. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. Join her in the mindset she's doing, and you will see a difference. Mm. You actually see, oh, this thing works. Cause why is she talking like that? And why is she always saying that to you? You specifically, and you are refusing to change. Yeah. Join her. Okay, I'm just giving her as an example. But if you have, oh, that's to- even true. I told my friends recently that when you're around me, certain things you can't say. We speak right here. Mm. Yeah. We speak right here. Get those type of things and don't ever push away someone who is giving you the truth. Mm. That's trying to something correct you. Something is wrong with you if you're trying to push them away. Oh, Why? No, no, not that something is wrong with you. It's just that at the moment. There's someone hovering over There's you. There's someone hovering <laughs> trying to <laughs> give them close. Draw them closer to you. Mm. So draw them, those type of friends closer to you so that you'll be able to process things right mm. You see things rightly and get time alone with God. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Don't say ah, that five minutes after I've typed my assignment is a long time with God. That's nonsense. Mm. Go and have a long time where you tell your friends, Leave me, mute your phone. Yeah. In fact, if you have put off your phone, you know, you can text your parents first if you have that type of conversation. <laughs> say, Please, I am going to be praying at this time. Mm. I honestly, I used to do that with my parents. I'll be like, Used to. I know I still do that. Okay, so they usually don't call like during that, during that time. Yeah. But before, I say, Daddy, please, I'm praying now. <laughs> do not call me <laughs> for this time. You know, Mommy, oh, or Brian, Anita, please don't come into my room. I'm going to be praying. So they know. I have my alone time with God. Mm. And where you are, you just get into the word, get into prayer, and you come out a times 10 better versions of mm-hmm. how you upgrade. were inside. Upgrade mm. level. Okay? Mm. So your mind is the faculty of your reasoning, of your thoughts. And God has given you this as an element of change, just as your words, which we might soon talk on. But just as your words, he's giving you this entity as an element of change. Yeah. Use it utilize it for the success we have now of course we're going higher level Mm -hmm. you can have it too Mm -hmm. and if you know you've never received salvation Mm -hmm. because all these things were saying except you have the spirit of god inside of Mm -hmm. you you got his nature it won't work righteousness you'll never be able to live it nor will you be able to live holiness or the good life it will always be up and down because that's the way the world functions Mm -hmm. But God so loved the world that he gave Jesus Mm -hmm. that you might have this life, this successful, sweet, glorious life and oneness with God. Mm -hmm. It's available for you now at this moment. Mm -hmm. And our dear sister Nisa is going to lead you. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are, let no man distract you. Mm -hmm. God is speaking to you. I want you to close your eyes. If you're in a bus, hold your bag well and close your eyes any place you know. And get ready and repeat these words after her. Praise the Lord. Just repeat after me. Say, O Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him, 
and in his name I have eternal life. I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I am now a child of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I declare over your life Amen. that the name of Jesus is named upon Amen. you. Wicked and unreasonable men are far from you. Yes. You begin to walk in righteousness. For as he's as he is, so are you in this world. Amen. Upward and forward. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. And for all those children of God that have gotten the word, congrats, because I know upgrade has come to you. Amen. You're moving to a higher level of glory and of grace. Of course, we will have a special book for everyone who got born again. It's called Now You're Born Again. Please take it that your mind will also be transformed to the new creation. Mm. And of course, we will make available the power of your mind, the PDF version, so you can download it and have it for yourself. Okay? Mm. Now, ah, episode four is going to be hot by the way. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> so let's get ready. Mm -hmm. But we love you all. And we are going to say bye-bye. Bye-bye. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.